Greetings, this is July 27th, and a thank you to the air crews out there that uh, make it look so easy. We just want you to get home safe, and uh, I'm very thankful, and the people I know are very thankful for what you do every day. Um, that's a picture of sandhill cranes sent in to me by a friend uh, living up in the Bridge Lake area. Uh, beautiful bird. Noisy, though. I'm subscribed to the NASA firm's fire email alerts and I've selected the chasm area and when the satellites pass overhead they detect if there's any heat in a given area and then send me an email alert. The MODIS system comes out about 12.30 in the morning and then the Suomi system uh, makes about the last pass during the day. So this one went past at about uh, 5.30 in the afternoon. And so I can do a comparison between the two satellite systems. Uh, first, the MODIS. It comes on in the morning, and here we're looking at the area around Marble Canyon. Uh, Kelly Lake is on both center of the screen. Clinton is over to the right of the screen. And then the Suomi Pass comes at the end of the day, and I can see it stretches to the northwest. Um, so there's a lot of activity there, and if I fill in the rest of the satellite information from the other two systems, uh, we can see what happened during the day. The information is the same data that goes to the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. To subscribe, just go to the NASA Firms link in the description below. Uh, click on the drop-down menu on the left-hand side and click on Fire Alerts and fill in your email. Then select an area uh, that's close to you. Uh, I used a park that encompasses a 50 kilometer radius. So I'm getting notifications uh, from the southeastern flank on the Flat Lake Fire that's just to the north. I had a request from viewer Trudy. Uh, can I show uh, the fire north on the raft? Let me check that out. Can you show the North Raft Mountain fire near Clearwater? I went to BC Wildfire and there's actually two fires there. There's the Raft River uh, FSR fire and then there's the West Raft River fire. So there's always so many fire flanks and fronts and uh, each one deserves attention so I thought I would spotlight this fire and just show what I would do to look into it. The Raft River FSR fire is 370 hectares it's currently classified as out of control and it started on the 19th the cause is unknown that would be the south fire that we're looking at on this screen. The West Raft River fire is 358 hectares. It's rated as out of control. It actually started way back on the 3rd. Now, just looking at the map and the topographical features, I can see they're both in a valley and the wind coming from the southwest, the lower left-hand side of the screen, and moving upwards is going to push the fires uh, up the valley and then the wind wraps around and causes that fire on the north to head in a westerly direction. They're also quite sheltered in these valleys so they're likely to spend a lot of time in there consuming as much fuel as they can and then work their way up to the rims or ridges of these uh, valleys up the mountainsides and the vegetation is going to be a little different in the valleys. Uh, it may put up uh, more of a defense uh, if there's greener or wetter vegetation around these rivers. So that's just my instinct based on what we can see on this screen. Let's take a look at the satellite information and find out what the fire is actually doing. Uh, this is a radiative scan from today. Uh, the green or light green dots, yellow dots mean hotter fire and the blue dots mean cooler fire. I'm also looking at the smoke trails and they're 
definitely heading in a northeasterly direction on southwest winds, but they're also milling around a bit, so there may be some changes in wind direction there. On the fire to the south, most of that heat is being generated on the eastern flank, whereas on the fire to the north, a lot of heat is being generated near the western flank. We've gone to the Sentinel-2 system on the EO browser. The link will be in the description below. Uh, it's difficult to see with a lot of cloud cover there. We're zoomed into the Raft River FSR fire. That's the southern one. And we can see flames. And they're in an arc shape, which could be the northeast flank of this fire. The West Raft River fire is a little more difficult to see. Uh, we see the flames that are in the lower left-hand side at the bottom of the screen. There are also some flames visible just to the left of center on the screen. And then moving closer to that goat trail on the top right-hand corner of the screen, there are flames or orange marks visible within the vegetation. Now let's go to the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System and they use M3 dots which take data from three satellite systems and triangulate it to the most accurate position possible with the information available at that time. And keep in mind some of these hotspots can be obscured by smoke and cloud and they can be off position. So we're looking at the indications from yesterday and now we're going to roll into today. The Raft River FSR fire to the south moved eastward, and the West Raft River fire to the north moved westward. And I think they both filled out a little. Now we're looking at the fire to the south, the Raft River FSR fire, and we can see the hot spots indicated. They're bunching up towards the eastern flank, and they're filling in. There's still lots of fuel there. It also looks like they may be moving southwards up the mountainside in their quest for fuel, aided by the winds coming in from the valley entrance to the southwest. Then when we look to the north at the West Raft River fire, uh, there, the active hotspots are right on that western, northwestern flank and potentially making their way up that hillside to the northeast where that goat trail was. Let's jump back to the satellite information and look at how the infrared built up during the day. Uh, we're looking at first the MODIS and then uh, the VIIRS will come on. Then the second MODIS system comes on and then the Suomi VIIRS fills it in. So both fires are active throughout the day and uh, we can see there's a lot of volatility there. Conditions may be drying out fairly quickly and there is some shifting wind going on. Uh, the fire flanks may be expanding kind of on all sides. Basically, I think the fire is looking for a way out of these valleys. Let's go back in time now, uh, I believe this is the 17th, and look at how these fires have progressed over the last week. We start on a day where there's one lone dot on the West Raft River fire, then uh, the northern fire pops up, the one at the south. Uh, there's some eastward movement there on the southern fire. And concentrating and then expanding into today. So uh, these fires have been stop and start, volatile, and now they appear to be expanding. And keep in mind, some of that data may have been obscured by clouds, uh, so we'd have to know what the weather conditions were on those days when infrared did not appear. Looking at the wind conditions in the area, it was coming from the northwest at eight kilometers an hour, and then it does this arc over both fire zones and heads back up to the northeast at seven kilometers an hour. So this swooping action, uh, we see there is actually less wind in that valley area by the darker tone of blue. It's hard to see on the screen, but when I checked this data, it was coming from the west at the fire zone at about eight kilometers an hour. 
and the forecast is pretty clear. It's from the south southwest all throughout the day with gusts uh, reaching 20, 25 kilometers an hour and then cooling and in the evening it will come from the north. And this pattern looks to be repeated throughout the week, so more drying conditions. Uh, not a lot of clouds or precipitation in the forecast. A quick look at the Copernicus fire danger map on Windy, and we can see where they're suggesting the highest level of fire danger is. We can see there's a lot of red on the fire to the south around Adams Lake and not as much around these two fire zones. So it, the vegetation may actually play into it being a little bit cooler and being in river country. We've jumped over to Dry BC. Uh, they are warning of extreme fire danger. And when we jump to the Dry BC webcam, Pointing south southwest, uh, we can see around a bend in the road there's some uh, inviting light and sunshine coming through, but there's also a haze there. Bit of a mystery around that corner. I will be back uh, sometime after the 12:30 update. It's 12:25 right now. The modus will come through, and we'll get to do a comparison between what's happened uh, in the latest modus update, the satellite scan, and what happened yesterday. And just a note, uh, the MODIS Terra may be offline on July 29th, so we'll have to rely on the other three systems. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look or spotlight at a specific fire, the Raft River FSR fire and the West Raft River fire. Uh, be safe out there and keep your nose to the breeze.